In this video, we'll render an architectural project in six different visualization styles. Hello and welcome back to the channel. As I was browsing YouTube, I came across this video by Upstairs called One Project in Six Different Visualizations. I found it to be really interesting and I decided to try this out myself. For this experiment, I've chosen the Rough House by Measured Architects and I modeled this in SketchUp. I then chose this two-point perspective to create the render. So I'll walk you through all these six visualization styles and also give you an overview of the process that I follow so that it can be useful for you as well. I'm Salman, an architect and an illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. Number one is 3D rendering and post-production. This is the most commonly used style of rendering and for this, you'll be using Lumion and Photoshop. Let's start off by working on the landscape elements in Lumion. Since this view has a lot of landscape element in it, I've added a few garden rocks, a row of plants on the boundary, and then use the mask placement tool to create a variation of grasses along the garden. The point here is to make these landscape elements as ununiform as possible because in reality, all the landscape elements that we see are informal and unorganized. Let's add a variation of trees along the boundary and create a view for the render we intend to take. Creating a view before detailing all the parts of the design saves a lot of time and it allows us to focus on that view of the design alone. Let's edit a few textures in Photoshop and use it for the pathway in front of the building. I also make it a point to create rough edges and imperfections wherever possible to give that kind of a realistic effect. Let's now start working on the textures of the main building. I would like to retain the same textures that we did on SketchUp and only work on the reflectivity of these materials. Let's also add some paint textures and lighting inside the building so that it shows up on the rendering. Let's now jump into the render page of Lumion and here let's start with the realistic style and add the basic effects to give it a realistic look. I've created two variations of the same scene just to see which works better with the lighting conditions. I do not intend to spend a lot of time here to achieve a very realistic look but I'm only trying to create a decent visualization that can be enhanced in Photoshop. We have the option to adjust the shadows and color correction within Lumion, so let's make those adjustments as well. Before making the final render, let's choose these additional outputs so it makes it easier to adjust the materials, shadows and lighting in Photoshop. Now let's open all the outputs in Photoshop and using the material ID, I would like to make some basic adjustments on few of the materials in the render. There are no set rules here, it completely depends on how you want the output to look. Let's also darken a few edges by creating a new layer and changing it in multiply mode. We can just brush over the edges to get this dark effect. Let's also add some human cutout to it. Change the color of the cutout to match with the render and also add a shadow to make it more realistic. Now since we have this large window opening, it would be nice to add a glowing light effect falling out of the window. For that, let's use the gradient tool and change the blend mode to overlay. The last step to complete this and the most important step that I follow as well is to use the camera raw filter. I've merged all the layers together to create a separate layer and using the camera raw tool you can adjust the temperature, exposure and various other adjustments in this toolbar. This will give us a more refined and a professional looking visualization. I'm quite happy with the output here and here's a before and after. So the time taken to do this in Lumion and the post production in Photoshop took about 2 hours to complete. Number 2 is Collage Style. Though this style has existed for a long time, this has been recently really popular on social media and using this technique you can achieve really unique presentations. Let's start by exporting the 2D image from SketchUp and import that into Photoshop. Now we do have a detailed video of how to do this post collage style of presentation in our channel so you can check that out as well. So the first thing here is to create different layers for each material and add colors into those layers. We have one for the main building structure, the adjacent structure, the window frame, the glass elements, the pathways, the green landscape, the sky and so on. Once we have separate layers for all these elements with specific colors, we can start adding textures on each of these colors. We place a texture over the layer we want, copy it around so that it fits throughout and just press Alt and click between these two layers. You can notice that the texture has created a mask over the base color that we've created. Now using this technique, we can fill up textures on all the colors that we've created. We will simply have to place the texture over it, adjust or resize it, and press Alt and click between the layers. We might have to distort or adjust the perspective of these textures so that it falls into place. 
I've taken an actual grass texture to use for these landscapes. Once we have the basic textures in place, we can start adding different elements like these pieces of rock that I found on Pinterest. We can simply right click to copy them and paste it into our Photoshop canvas. The same goes for landscape elements as well. You could simply find a PNG element to make this process easier but sometimes you have a specific kind of plant that you want in your render. In that case, we might have to go through this process of removing the white background in this image. The same goes for trees as well. We could just copy paste them, remove the white background and place it around. I have then exported the shadows from SketchUp and placed it over the layers. We can use this as a selection to add our own shadows into the rendering. As for the human cutouts, I wanted to try something really different. So I searched for 18th century humans on Pinterest and I found these characters to add into the rendering. This really gave a complete different look to the rendering and made it really unique. Next is the part where we need to populate the landscape and for this I have chosen different kinds of landscape elements to place around the entire canvas. We'll have to adjust the hue saturation of these elements so that it fits with the overall colors. Now this is a repetitive process where you just have to copy elements and place it around in your composition. I've also used a leaf kind of brush to populate it even further and fill up all the ground plane in the rendering. Let's add more shadows to give a depth to the building structure. Some highlights on the building will work as well. And for the last part, I found a blue paper texture and this became the sky and it fitted perfectly with the rendering. With some more highlights, this was the final output. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a detailed video of this process. So the total time taken to create this post collage was about 2 hours. Number 3 is pen and ink. Personally, I'm a great fan of pen and ink medium and I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. The pen and ink has been one of my most favorite mediums and I've practiced extensively in this. Though I have made a lot of detailed architectural monuments in pen and ink, Trying out the same medium with modern architecture and a lot of landscape is a bit challenging. I started off with the outlines of the entire structure first and then created the outlines of the landscape elements. I use a pen, say a 0.3, to create outlines of the entire drawing first and then use multiple line weights to create a variation. The major challenge in this experiment is the amount of landscape elements that are there in front of the building and all of these elements really need to pop out and stand as separate individual components by creating outlines and shading the areas behind these elements. Once I've marked the edges with a thicker outline, I then used a different pen to start hatching behind these plants. The pen and ink is kind of a meditative process and I've been wanting to make some renderings in a long time. So I use this as an opportunity to try that. So we start creating depth layer by layer on each separate element in the image. It does take a bit of planning and some patience as well to get everything in place. I created a rough freehand wooden texture on the building and used a gradation of hatches to show the glass reflection. The time taken for this is maybe around 2 hours and this is the final output. Number 4 is Digital Sketch. This is basically sketching the view on Photoshop or any other drawing software and it carries the element of hand drawing style in a digital format. Digital architectural illustrations is what I've been doing professionally and for this one, I wanted to create a comical style of illustration. We can start off by exporting our view from SketchUp and use it as a base to draw over it in Photoshop. I'm using a digital tablet from Huion to make this illustration. Let's start off by marking the outlines of the building first. And for this particular style, it has to have the character of hand-drawn style to it. So the imperfect line work is part of the style. I used a tree cutout to create these vigilant edges and for the other trees in the background, I used freehand lines to draw them in layers. Let's overlap these trees one over the other to create a depth in the composition. And once the outlines are done, let's create hatches similar to the style of pen and ink. I also used a rough brush to create this dark effect to represent the background. A loosely drawn tree branch and a bunch of grass becomes the foreground element and here I've just copied the textures from the previous style to use as the base. The window openings can be completely black here and let's start drawing the foreground elements which are rocks and smaller plants. I'm using a marker brush to highlight these landscape elements with different shades of green and also add a scribbly lines to represent the sky. A few more darker outlines on the building can make your viewer's eye focus on the main subject so let's add that as well. And this is how it turned out. And the total time taken for this was probably 1 hour or so. Number 5 is watercolors. Now this one is way out of my comfort zone and the last time I used watercolors was like 5 years ago. 
I'm quite nervous about this one. So let's see how this is going to turn out. To be honest, this was a nerve-wracking experience because the moment I started this rendering, I was completely clueless. I just applied the basic watercolor techniques that I could remember and I tried making the base layers of watercolor first. Unfortunately, the paper that I'm using for this was not for watercolors as well. So I somehow had to manage it. Once the base colors were in place, I used a thinner brush to create details of the landscape on the foreground. I then started the second layer of watercolors for which I used more darker shades to create more depth and contrast. A bit of watercolor wash to represent the sky and then I used a watercolor pencil to create outlines of the building. This was to make sure that the building is highlighted in this rendering. I also detailed the wooden texture on the building a bit to stand out. And lastly, I just remember this technique of using dark purple to represent shadows and I used this technique to enhance the building facade. And that is how it turned out. Not as bad as I expected, definitely a decent rendering. The time taken for this was probably one and a half hours. Number 6 is AI. We are undoubtedly in the AI era and this video will not be completed without generating an AI output. So let's jump into it. Now this one is quite exciting and for this experiment I'll be using Prom AI. Before jumping into the AI platform, we need to create a base image which can be used to create the render. For that, let's use a basic SketchUp model but we'll also need to add a few trees and landscape here to help AI identify these elements easily. Let's set a view and export the image. Inside Pro AI, let's head over to Sketch Rendering. Now if you guys want a detailed tutorial of this, we've already made a video on our channel and you can head over it to have a look. So let's upload our image into Sketch Rendering and go into Architecture and choose Villa Residence. Inside this, we have the Modern tab and for this, let's choose Unique Simplicity. Let's also type in a prompt to help AI understand this better. I'm using the keywords Modern Villa, Grey Wooden Cladding, Concrete Textures and so on. The first round of output did not turn out the way I expected and then I figured out it was because of the prompt that we used. I then reworked on the prompt a bit and this was the final output. I can say that this is a really great output but it also displays the limitations of AI by which we do not have 100% control of what we are generating. But this is still a great tool to try out. I really like the environment that AI has created in this image and it has a great scheme of colors in this render. I'll leave a link to this platform in the description of this video. So the AI rendering took the least time and it was only about 15 minutes. So let's put all the results together to see how it looks. We could also create a cool animation by making these as slides. So that was a really fun exercise and quite challenging as well. Personally, I liked all the outputs since each one were unique on its own. I personally like the post-digital collage because this turned out better than I expected. The watercolor medium was quite out of my style as well but this also turned into a decent output. Let me know in the comments which of these you like the most. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.